Road racing is the most popular professional form of bicycle racing, with some of the fittest athletes in the world competing. Pro cyclists, when racing, are required to maintain an average speed of around 45 km per hour on flat roads, increasing to over 100 km an hour on downhill descents and 65 km an hour in the final stages of a race in the sprint to the finish line. There are many different types of road racing events, but the Saudi Tour is what is known as a multiple-stage bike race. Held over five days or stages, the competitor with the lowest cumulative time to complete all stages is declared the overall or general classification GC winner. This means that the most important factors when trying to win such an event are consistency and endurance. There is no point going all out to win an individual stage if in the process the rider spends all their energy and cannot compete well in the following day's stages. This can cause them to dramatically lose time and reduce their position in the general classification. It is possible, therefore, for a rider to win the overall event without having won an individual stage victory. As a result, a lot of strategy and teamwork comes into play when attempting to win a multiple stage bike race. The Saudi Tour will be contested by 18 teams of seven riders. And although it may appear like the race is an individual event in that only one rider is crowned the ultimate winner, it's impossible for a rider to win such a race without the support of a strong team. Like in football, one player may score the goal and get all the glory, but they only get to score the goal because of good teamwork and strategy that gave them the opportunity. And like a football team, each member of a pro cycling team has a specific role or position to play in order to help the team leader have the best chance of scoring the win. This may be as simple as fetching supplies from team vehicles, but comes into play most noticeably with a strategy known as drafting. Air resistance or aerodynamics is the biggest factor in road racing that prevents a rider from going faster and can be the biggest drain on energy reserves and endurance. As a result, teams will try to protect their team leader, helping him to conserve energy for when it's needed most, like a sprint to the finish. They do so by riding in front of the team leader, doing all the hard work of pushing the wind out of the way, providing a slipstream for their leader behind. Often they will take turns riding at the front in order to share the workload. Teams will often have a similar strategy, and so will all merge into one big group called a peloton. Riding within a well-developed peloton, a rider can save up to 40% of their energy. The peloton responds to wind conditions and shifts shape in order to exploit tailwinds and fight headwinds and crosswinds. When encountering crosswinds, a particular type of formation will emerge within the peloton, known as an echelon. Riders will shift position diagonally in order to get cover against the crosswind, cycling through the leading position to share the workload. Often, however, there will not be enough room on the road for all riders to be part of the group, so riders will be forced to drop off from the leading group and form another group behind them, and so on and so on, forming an echelon. As useful as the peloton is for conserving riders' energy, at some point if riders want to improve their position in the overall classification or achieve a stage victory, they must try to distance themselves from the main field in the peloton, forming what is known as a breakaway. When a breakaway occurs, the drafting strategy will change depending on who and how many riders are in the group. Often this will result in different types of paced lines, where riders share the workload by cycling through the front position, trying to put as much distance between themselves and the peloton. This commonly takes the form of a single paced line or a double paced line. One final drafting strategy comes into play at the end of the day's racing, when riders will battle it out in order to cross the finishing line first and claim the honor of a stage victory. These dramatic, high-intensity closing moments of the race are what is known as the sprint. As the finish line nears, teams will attempt to organize their riders into a single-file line. Their best sprinter will be at the end of the line, in a formation known as a lead-out train. The lead-out train will move up through the field trying to gain the best position to launch an attack on the finish line. This usually occurs about 200 to 300 meters from the finish. 
Here, the lead-out train will dramatically accelerate with an explosive burst of energy. Each rider at the front giving everything they have before peeling off exhausted to reveal the next rider in the lead-out train who does the same. If timed correctly, it provides the perfect platform for the final rider in the line to attack the finish line at full speed and hopefully defeat his rivals and achieve the stage victory. So, you can see there is a lot to pro cycling which makes it one of the most competitive and exciting sports on the planet.